How's this depth chart going to work, Owen? So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the forwards, move our way back the pitch and go through a number of counties. We're going to start with the All-Ireland Champions this morning and see how they're stacked in terms of their starting six forwards and then who are the first men off the bench. We'll do that for every position, uh, including backs, midfields and goalkeeper. And we're going to start with Tyrone, who interestingly came up in the uh, very first episode of season two of the football pod with Paddy and James. Is that how we're calling it? Or or Jimmy, as he kept getting referred to. That was very. It's like, yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know he was Jimmy, but um, Paddy Andrews has decided he is. So here is uh, James Dunn, who saying he thinks Toronto are going to get relegated. Have a look. I give you a controversial one. Go for it. Tyrone. Tyrone. Say it again because I don't think we heard you. Oh, oh, hold on. Say it again. Great to say it. (laughs) I think Tyrone will be under pressure because of the way the season falls this year. Hold on, under pressure you know, and I think or relegated? Last year. No, but this is relegation we're talking about here. No messing. So you think they're down, yeah? Okay. The only thing I'd say... Well, I mean, I think it'll be very close. I think it's going to be very close. But realistically, last year, right, and the way Duhar operates, he brought Tyrone down to Kerry last year and he did not care about that result. Yeah. He could have literally thrown out anyone. They came down and they came down the Friday. They went training. I think the game was on a Saturday. They trained again on the Saturday and they went playing the match on Saturday. <laughs> like, I think Duhar is a different animal when it comes to the league. I don't think he takes as much interest in it. Mm. And I think that after the holiday, they might train through that league, sacrifice the results and go at it for the championship. Kyle Coney, good morning to you. Good morning, gentlemen. James, I don't know who says you're, you're going down this year and, and won't really care about it. I think that's the... The point was well, not so much that they're going down, but that the league is, is largely irrelevant to a team who's just won the All Ireland. What do you think? Uh, I don't think um, up here in Tyrone that the leagues are irrelevant. Definitely not. Um, I wouldn't be I, w- I wouldn't be saying that the Duhar doesn't fancy the league at all because I can definitely tell you that the Riot Act was definitely read after that victory down in Killarney. Tyrone were out of the house thirteen nights in a row. Um, between meetings, videos, training. Um, so that result maybe kick-started to where they ended up, but uh, it definitely that result definitely meant something. Yeah, it's funny because we, we've spoken to everybody we've had on the show who was involved with the team last year, and they all pinpoint that defeat as some kind of turning point where they all had to look into their souls and decide what they were going to do. And they've all denied that they trained, by the way, just to, um, to give a bit of balance to what uh, James said. Because certainly the rumours were, the pictures were of them wandering around uh, Killarney National Park with footballs and maybe it was stretching the legs, maybe it was hardcore training, well, who knows? I, I, I've been involved in Tyrone teams uh, and I'm sure that the likes of the Kerry lads and you know the lads further down the country who are travelling up till the, the north here till play league games the first thing you want to do is get out stretch your legs um, go for a bit of a walk I, I know that there might have been an AFL ball or something involved um, with Conor McKenna and different things like that so definitely there, there was um, there, I don't think there was any training but I think it was more just get stretched to the legs go for a bit of a dander and stuff like that The, the other thing and to, to be serious about James's point is that the season is so short this year and they have just come back from a, a, a team holiday we've seen them in the McKenna Cup and Look, Cavan obviously really pulled it up to them and, and won that game at a canter. So I'm not saying that they don't care about the league and they'll clearly be trying to win the games, but they do understand that if they're going to win another All-Ireland and they have the talent to do so, that maybe you sacrifice certain aspects of being prepared for the specific game at the weekend with a, an eye in the long term. So players coming back from injury, you're not rushing them through, you're making sure that the conditioning, if it's not fully up to speed for the week, you, you maybe you don't taper it down and you use the game as another session as opposed to an outcome in itself. Yeah, oh, I fully agree with what you're saying. Um, and just probably the way the season's fallen, that things, you, you might just use those games at the weekend to, to continue your preparation for, for the championship ahead. Look, it's probably going to be the same for for Dublin, Kerry. Uh, every team in Division 1 has, has the aspirations of, of winning the Sam Maguire. So, uh, Tyrone's training will definitely have to be tapered to suit their league games because the competitive nature of Division 1 the teams up there is just every game is going to be down to fine fine margins so it'll be interesting to see I'll, I would presume that the, they'll aim to start the league off pretty well where they can get themselves as safe as possible as early as possible if they can work it that way I know it always doesn't work out so that's, that's the way I'm sure Brian and Fergal will be aiming to start the league 
Uh, we're going to go through position by position your depth chart, Kyle. But we're actually going to start with some of the players that are missing because the news came out during the week that Tyrone McCann is the fifth player to opt out of the Tyrone panel this year. You've also got Ronan O'Neill, Mark Bradley, Hugh Pat McGeary, and Michael Cassidy all missing from the squad this year. Uh, when, when it comes to, to those missing men, and maybe even just in the case of Tyrone McCann, is it a case that at the age of 31, the level of commitment that is required to be a bit part player is just too much? Or is, is there something here that, that we're not seeing? Um, I suppose it, it's it's really hard to, to speak directly for the lads. Uh, I'd be especially friendly with <coughs> Michael Cassidy, who, who had a big part to play under under Mickey Hart uh, the previous few years and um, played in the All-Ireland semi-final. Actually had a man Markham job the 2019 against on David Moore and done pretty well till he cramped up. But probably from Tierney McCann's aspect, he is 31 coming. Um, his club probably have suffered over the last couple of years with one of the, they're one of the teams in Tyrone here have normally had three county men maybe four at some instance so he's maybe decided look I've got a, an all Ireland medal I've played my part in that I've played my part in a number of years he's getting married this year um, I want to give a bit of service to the club now with the competitive nature in Tyrone as well that every league game is like a is like a championship we never know who's going to win on any given Friday or Sunday so that would be my thinking behind Tyrone's um, decision he's probably got to the the summit he's got where they we've all wanted to go for the last 12 13 years we've been involved in that team so he's probably made a decision based benefit on himself and and probably his partner and his club I would say Do you expect any more to go Kyle or, or do you feel like that might be it for now? I would hope that's it now <laughs> if it comes to anybody else's jumping ship now I would have a few concerns I would like to anybody that's um Anybody that that was thinking about going would have have already spoke to management and, and probably departed. But I, I would hope that's that's it. Like I would hope that's I would say that's it for now. Uh, let's get into the players that are there then, Kyle, and we'll start with the forwards. As we mentioned, we've asked you to pick your starting six forwards and then uh, the players that are coming off the bench first. So uh, you've got McConnor Myler at ten, Michael O'Neill and Matty Donnelly as the rest of the half forward line, and then your inside line is Darren McCurry at thirteen, Colin McShane at fourteen, and Conor McKenna at the other corner forward and then just to go through the rest of them for our radio listeners your backup is Paul Donaghy, Niall Sludden, Dara Canavan, Emmett McNabb and Lee Brennan what was the tightest decision here for you? I think I just left out Niall Sludden um, who had a outstanding year last year but that that was the tough call uh, that that was down to fine fine margins like between him and, and Cahill McShane and then moving Matthew Donnelly about to sort of just Matthew's one of those players that could start at 10 and play anywhere from 10 till till 15 so it was probably just that that was the tightest call for me we had to get Cal McShane into the team um, he contributed highly off the bench last year he was Tyrone's top scorer Tyrone got 213 from their from their five games off the bench in the championship last year they need that freshness they need that injection um, as we know it's, it's now a 20 man game but I think Niall can provide that along with Dara um, and Emmett McNabb. But definitely the tightest call was getting in, getting Cal McShane into the team and just leaving Niall Sludden out, who was fabulous last year. You're, you're replacing one forward with a different type of forward. Mm-hmm. Is, is, that, is that something that you expect this year from, from Tyrone to see maybe an edging back towards a, a game plan that involves more inside forwards than those players who are just war horses around the middle third now in fairness Sludden c- can finish his own score as well and is a brilliant attacker yeah um, I suppose you can they're two definitely different players there's no chance that Nell comes in and plays full forward uh, I think that putting Matthew Donnelly out till wing half forward still gives you that industrious work tackling around the middle third he, he plays a lot of his, his football around that area of the field anyway he can drift into the full forward line and we all know that Conor McKenna can come out and be a link man with Michael O'Neill dropping back so uh, it's it's definitely a different type of player Niall Sludden's a different type of player but I do think that he can come in he can give you that injection he's the type of player that, that has that personality of if he's been left out of the starting team that, that he wants to prove a point when he comes on and, and you know if that works in his favour it'll definitely give thrown an injection off the bench What What is the trajectory this year for Derek Hanavan? Because 
the hype around him obviously has, has been huge because of who he is but also because of the footballer that he's proven himself to be over the last little while the expectation I'm sure is that this guy becomes a starter for Tyrone eventually is that going to be this season? It could well be um, that that could very well materialise with Dara Dara's a fabulous player um, we've seen his cameos last year to till, till a certain degree he probably didn't get as much football as he wanted he, he got injured throughout the year but um, I think that if he's not a starter in the middle of the year it could definitely materialise to the, to the end of the year it, it's where we fit all these players in, into six positions that's that, that's the problem <laughs> that Tyrone have it's Good. they probably have, have a lot of similar similarities between him and Darren McCurry do you know what I mean they can play both inside they're very jinky both kick their own scores very sharp but how do we leave out the player last year that the, the formed Darren's in? Good, a good problem to have. Um, what about the younger brother? There's a lot of uh, hype about Rory as well. He's only he's only 17, 18 at this stage, so it might be too early, but I think Dara was in at the same time. I think Peter was in around the same age as well. So is there any talk about him making the senior squad this year? I wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised if he's floating around the background team somewhere. He's... He, he's just a cut from from the same cloth as the other two, so he's got that ability to... Um, to be falling down the ground and jumping up at the same time like like Peter used to have he could put his hand on the ground and spin back up and kick scores uh, I've seen him in action a few times and I think that, he, that he's turned up the, the school's competition here that he's playing in it's one of the games he out of three three twelve he scored three eight um, so <laughs> we, we, we have an exciting prospect for the future still to come I have one last question about the strength and depth right because it, it seems like um, we, we underrated the value well, we, we always talked about Dublin's strength and depth, but we actually underrated the value of the scores they kicked. And in many games, that was the difference between them and Mayo or even them and Kerry. You would have someone like McManaman coming off the bench. He would he would be good for a goal and two points. Or the, the rest of the bench would be good for numerous scores or winning frees that would be kicked by the free taker, in fairness. And maybe that's just a template for winning all Ireland. You actually need players who are going to be able to was it two twelve? You said that they got off the bench. Two, those five two, thir- two, two thirteen, I think. Two thirteen. The five games. Callum McShane contributed about one seven from the bench. I think it was from last year. Now, not to say Callum McShane and McManaman are the same or anything like it, because they're not. But is there a possibility that Tyrone in their heads have decided that this guy is is going to win games for us by playing twenty five minutes, and when defenses are in any way tired, he is going to come on, be a human wrecking ball, and no one's going to be able to deal with them and. I'm sure he would not be happy with that. And we've spoken to him, like his, his ambition is not to be a sub. And I, he's too good to be a sub. But is there any possibility that the Brains Trust is like, well, look, we've just won this All-Ireland, you know. We'll give him a chance, but we wouldn't... 100%. Yeah. That could be, that, that could be a real possibility. And, and I know that um, that Fergal and Brian, uh, Brian personally, w- would be team before anything that's not that's 100% there's nothing comes before the team and Brian's definitely that type of type of man but I just don't think that we can settle for Cal McShane from the bench um, as you say yes he, he can provide he's provided huge scores last year's championship from the bench um, I think we still have that option when, when you have Niall Sludden Dara Canavan uh, and, and the other lads that we'll mention in a minute, um, they can uh, provide that injection. But I just don't think Cahal settles for being number seventeen or number eighteen. And, and Donahue, like as as the the third member of that like well proven trio off the bench, like Donahue was sensational in the in, in the league last year for for Tyrone. J- just a quick word then on, on Emmett McNabb and, and Lee Brennan. Like I mean, the, the, this is a depth chart that we're doing. The depth that, that Tyrone have in that forward unit, if Lee Brennan is your fifth choice uh, attacker off the bench, is, is actually incredible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, I suppose like, the rumours that I'm hearing is Paul Donahue's he's back flying again. Uh, he's added probably a, a bit more size to, to himself, he, he, so he's able to cope probably with, with winning his own ball inside if, he, if he's going into play in there. Um, Emmett McNabb lit up the Toronto Championship last year, without a doubt. He, he was fabulous. Um, he had a final that people could only dream of. He's sp- sp- spent a few spells in Scotland playing soccer so he's, he's a talented boy um, and I think he could be one to watch this year in terms of throwing uh, he was injured during the McKenna Cup so if he gets himself back fit and back going well he, he could be a, a surprise package from throwing from and Lee Brennan we all know that probably didn't get enough game time last year that he wanted but I think maybe with the walking away of, of Ronan O'Neill and Mark Bradley this could be a, a chance for Lee to 
shove himself in till the reckoning of the 26 and if he gets game time in, in the league he, he could hold down a spot so that's really exciting the, the, the forwards unit if you take a look at the defensive setup, I think the six backs you've gone for naturally are, are the six who started against Mayo in the All-Ireland final last year Michael McKernan Ronan McNamee and Paul Tricamp see the full back line Frank Burns Peter Hart and Kieran McGeary the half backs just to go through uh, the substitutes then Pete Teague, Roy Brennan, Niall Kelly, Connor Shields, Sean Loughran and Cormac Munro are on the bench. Names that are far uh, le- uh, far lower profile than the, the, the substitute attackers because of the fact that those six backs were so nailed on last year for Tyrone. What do you expect to happen if there's going to be any movement here this year in terms of those six backs? Uh, I suppose it's very... Tyrone's back, back line last year was, you know... Fabulous. We we had our full full back line. I think might have been a, might have been the semi final coming up, kicking three scores, three points, one, a point each. Obviously, Niall Morgan kicks scores from from free kicks. But from from any point of view, we could have Roy Brennan seeing a lot of game time. I know he probably didn't get uh, as much game time as he wanted under the new management last year. But COVID ha- ha- had an effect on him, uh, and it, he struggled to get back. Till, till anywhere near his best, uh, so he he be one that could give um, maybe Michael McKern a run for his money, but definitely P- Peter Teig has has excelled at club level and is a solid full back, which you know can give Ronan McNamee if he was feeling the the hangover from the from the All Ireland final, he, he can give him that wee bit of a push, that wee bit of extra incentive to to keep his position, to keep pushing, to keep training hard because sometimes it can be can be hard if you're you're think you're that nailed on position and you don't have any competition so Pete Teague could be a, a, a big player for Tyrone this year in the defence Is there a chance that if there is to be a, a switch up in that half back line that you do see someone like Conor Myler for example uh, starting a, a game with, with one of those shirts on, on his back not necessarily that numbers mean a whole pile to, to that Tyrone middle third Myler is that type of Conor, Conor is that type of player where he can he can probably he plays number six for his club in Oma, so he can probably fluctuate an awful lot between half back and half forward. We've seen him do man marking jobs last year on the opposition's danger man and take them out of the game. So there's a whole possibility that that Mailer could start there. He could play anywhere five, six, or seven. Is probably things that that excelled for him last year was his kick passing. We've seen that that he was a lot more head up uh, and looking forward for the play so his foot passing so I wouldn't be surprised if we see see that although Peter Hart uh, was crying out to be moved to half back in previous seasons uh, and we've seen what kind of year he had last year was was tremendous so th- there's a there's a whole possibility that, that we could see a half back line of Kieran McGeary Peter Hart and Conor Myler even I mean, that's, that's how you shuffle the deck really isn't it if, if, if we're talking about the overall depth if something happens now, I mean, you know a lot more about these defenders than I do, but like none of those players coming off the bench, granted there were a couple of other factors at play, none of those players on the back's bench actually played in the All-Ireland final last year, whereas you look at those attacking substitutes and you've got someone like Niall Sludden there, that probably is the way they shuffle the deck if an injury comes up in the backs that Myler does drop back and, and, and Sludden does start, or do you see it a different way? No, I, I would agree with that. Um, I would agree if, there, if there's something happens in the half-back line or... Um, I would see Myler dropping back and picking up a five or a seven jersey and keeping keeping something similar. Likewise, Frank Burns plays fourteen for his club. He he can move into the forward line just as handy. Um, and then we can see one of the other fellas drop in. But if if there was something major to happen, if someone was to pick up a serious injury, a long term injury, uh, I would see Myler dropping back from from ten to to play in the wing the wing half back positions. Just one last thing then on those backs. You've you've mentioned Teague obviously as a good competitor for McNamee over the next little while. Who else would you see as a as a potential bolter? Uh, and if we focus this on age profile on that bench, well, the, the, just looking at the graphic here, um, we have Connor Shields, Sean Lockran, and Cormac Monroe. Cormac started a couple of league games last year, and um, we're going to have a problem now. We lost here. McCann was the initial substitute, and Michael Casty and Q Pat McGeary were names that were probably always on the 26 and if they weren't on the 26 they, they were being introduced really quickly so these fellas are going to have to step up they're going to get their chance in the league uh, uh, and these are three lads who from what I'm hearing around the squad at the moment who are who are putting their hand up who are asking questions of, of, of the team that sort of won the All-Ireland so th- these three lads could definitely offer something um, Connor Shields more be a cornerback 
sticky cornerback and Sean Lockman would be the same but Comic Monroe definitely could offer something uh, as well pushing forward If we move this on then just to finish up on the last couple of positions Kyle uh, the starting two midfielders are pretty much picked themselves at this point it's going to be Conkle Patrick and Brian Kennedy two lads that weren't necessarily questioned last year but maybe they were underestimated in terms of what they could do they dispelled that comfortably in the All-Ireland Final they were sensational this is probably the year more so where we look at them kicking on and becoming two of the most dominant midfielders in the country as opposed to thinking what Ben McDonnell and Paddy McNulty who you have on the bench in terms of what they could do to, to steal their jersey Well um think Andy Moore maybe questioned the two boys um, but <laughs> uh, uh, no I think Andy Fair was point. probably Andy was probably um, saying just what everyone else probably thought the two lads had been replaced in every game up until the, the they probably had decent semi-finals and, and the All-Ireland final we were thinking some one of the two of them had, had to be dropped to get Cahill McShane back in so look they had two of them had exceptional finals um Con had a really, really good game. Uh, we know that the two of them can get about the pitch. We, they're extremely tall fellas. We're, we're thrown now, like to go really, really long to get over the press for the kickouts. And I, I do think that that that's the, or will be the starting midfield. Uh, but one point that I would add is, Potty McNulty's thirty-one. He's been around the throne squad a few years on, under Mickey Hart. So I would imagine there's been some kind of conversation here. I know if I was invited back to a throne squad at 31 I would have be having some conversation with the management to ask and where I'm going to play and what role I'm going to play so I would imagine that Potty's been given some kind of indication that you can push one of these two or else that there's a, a massive role for you off the bench You're 32 any sign of you being asked back? Absolutely not <laughs> <laughs> I was listening to James O'Donoghue um, during the week and he had up five operations and I can relate to that I had number six just before Christmas Oh my god and how, how are you now? I'm recovering well, recovering well. Looking forward to the, the club season. So I'm um, um, probably a four month recovery time. So got it done in December. So we're probably we're talking in around March, April time before we can. Was it ready a, sh- to go. a shoulder as well? No, already had the shoulder done. This one was the on the ankle. Right. So I know James is uh, pain. It's a, it it takes quite the toll on the body that we never see outside. We just see you guys show up. Uh, a little bit of talk in the pre match. A little bit of talk after the match some marks out of 10 but no clue about the actual struggles that you're going through to get the body right yeah yeah like that's 100% and I, I felt for James like we know what kind of player he was and the year he had uh, um, whenever he was in the, the peak and the height of his powers he, he was unbelievable to watch and it's just it's a bit frustrating that people only see the tog out on a Sunday or tog out on a Saturday evening and don't see it like, um, myself personally this year I played with Charlie's damaged for the last three months on the ankle just to get through the club season to, to finish it out you know so you, we don't know what kind of effects it's going to have when we get to 40, 45, 50 so well, we wish you the very best with the recovery um, just a couple of other things then to, to wrap up I mean the starting goalkeeper is a fella called uh, Niall Morgan I don't think there's going to be too much of a question about uh, the depth chart on that one Darren McInnenly is the, the backup goalkeeper on that front and we just want to put up uh, just some versatile players here because we just haven't mentioned them uh, before we wrap up Richard Donnelly Liam Rafferty Jonathan Munro and Rory Brennan in there these guys essentially can play anywhere in the middle third is it Kyle or, or, or where do you see them uh, over the next few months yeah, uh, Richard Donnelly started a number of games for Tyrone uh, at midfield uh, between 11, 12 and 13 and 14 as well. Liam Rafferty uh, had a burst onto the scene under Mickey Hart and played between uh, four and six, anywhere between there. Uh, he can really play anywhere. For his club, we played them later, late stages of the league last year, he played 14, which was, which was really, really... Um, threw us off the ball because he, he is powerful and he's pace so uh, like he's a, a player that you wouldn't be shocked to see play some kind of league team at maybe 10 or if one of the boys are injured 10 or t- uh, 12 and we know what kind of fact Rory Brennan has in the team we've seen him throughout the, the seasons for Tyrone he's definitely a versatile player he can play anywhere he, he's comfortable eye up the pitch he can kick scores and Jonathan Monroe's one name that probably was affected by injury an awful lot last year I know the management rate him really really highly Um He's he's a player that can play in the forward line and midfield unit. So they have they have options. Uh, they have a lot of options for for different players. And, and I do think they've used the Dublin template very very well. The the management and they know that that you need 
22, 23 players on your bench. I know up in Tyrone, I'm not sure if it's the same anywhere else, but the talking points nearly was sometimes the 26th whenever they were named on a Thursday night. Uh, that was nearly the, the talk among the county who, who was on it because the strength and depth was that strong and it needs to be that strong if you want to retain the All-Ireland. Yeah, I'm sure didn't they name everybody on the day of the All-Ireland as well. And there was a couple of number 26 jerseys, I think, on All-Ireland final day. Kyle, great stuff. That was a brilliant introduction to this new feature for us. Thanks a million. Cheers. No, no problem. Thanks for having me. It's Kyle Coney giving us our very first GAA death chart. We've started with Tyrone. We'll keep going with uh, all the Division 1 counties over the next few uh, days and weeks. It's nine minutes past eight this morning. Up next, a very special Six Nations preview with Keith Wood. OTB AM. This is OTB Sports Radio.